Hey you guys, it's Mongolia Mindset, and today we're gonna to be helping William find his personality type. Um, William, you don't have to go into any like drama uh details about like anything you don't want to, uh, any trauma, anything like that. But whatever you say, we'll be using to find your best fit type. Um, can you introduce yourself? Hello, uh, I'm William. I like typology. I like figuring out how people work, and I like helping other people figure out how they work. If they listen to me. Okay. Uh, what got you into typology? Um, honestly, it's a couple of things, but it was mainly an envy problem. I was like, man, everybody else is so cool. Everybody else is awesome. Everybody else has got a special thing that they're doing, but I'm just kind of lame. And so I thought, well, there's got to be, I was basically desperate and I already knew about the MBTI, like the kind of milk toast stuff. And I dove into it. And I was like, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. And I found out about Jungian psychology and what he wrote and what John Beebe wrote and eventually Linda Behrens. And so I was like, this is it. This is my meal ticket. This is my, how do I put this? This is what will differentiate me. Mm -hmm. And that's wow. how it started. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um... What do you think are the best and worst parts about uh, typology? Best and worst parts. Uh, I think the best parts are that. <sighs> best parts. Helps me understand how people work. I'm not especially tuned in to why people do what they do. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it says, Psst, hey, William, there's like, like observable reasons why people do what they do. And you can use that for whatever you see fit. And so that's my favorite part about it is that it's like, it's like a little cheat sheet. You meet a person, you're really paying attention to them, trying to get stuff out of them. And after 20 minutes, you got your cheat sheet. And it's like, I didn't have to put in nearly as much work to get to know you because now I know the basics of who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I can build on that. The, problem with it is that like any system governing psychology or humans in general it can't be complete there will always be things that are missing there will always be holes in the system there will always be a missing part and if you can't humble yourself and say hey you know i'm using this system but there's always going to be a flaw somewhere there's always an exception to the rule if you can't do that that the t the system's going to like take a hold of you and you won't be able to grasp nuance because you're possessed by well this is how it is because most system it's like no the world is bigger than that i think it was william shakespeare actually who said uh, the world is there's more in heaven and on earth than are dreamt of in your philosophies and i think that's very true mm -hmm. oh man man um, I'm going to ask you a quick question here. Do you believe anything could be true or false? Do I think anything could be true or false? Yeah. Because, like, yeah. if you make the statement, well, nothing, anything could be true or false. It's like, well, is that true? <laughs> like, what the heck? Um, yeah. Oh, wait. I might have actually misunderstood your question. Mm -hmm. Anything could be true or false. I mean, could anything be true or false? Maybe? I mean, I... I think there are some things that are logically impossible. And mm -hmm. so there are some things that have to be true or that have to be false. But there's, because of the lack of scope of human knowledge, you can't know absolutely if you're right. You can be fairly confident, but mm -hmm. there's, always, there's always a little room for doubt, a little room for criticism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, you know, uh, we are limited to the tools that we have at hand. A lot of times, you know, as science grows, then like things you look back 10 years ago, like, oh, shit, that shit was all wrong. You know, that's what I. Like, oh, yeah. Continues to like update like books on like, especially like um, the systems inside the body. A lot of them are like updated like every couple of years based off the information. Um, um, so uh, what do you see yourself in the next five or 10 years? 
Uh, okay, so I'm going to be honest. This was like <laughs> the one question that I prepared myself for because um, <laughs> I, I wanted it to be a surprise, but I couldn't stop thinking about this one. Mm -hmm. And it took me a little bit, but I'm thinking in an apprenticeship under a psychologist like or like a clinical psychologist, barring that somewhere moving up in the world in sales because I like to convince people to buy things. <laughs> you think that's pretty easy for you to do hell yeah if i have the tech if someone's like okay william here's what you're selling here's what why people would want it here's how you can attach it i'm like i got this bro and i can sell to anybody convince hey you're already spending 500 bucks on a ps5 go ahead and get these little things for the controller it improves your aim so much it's only 9.99 you definitely need it and they're like oh okay because that's an that's an easy sell and so I really like to convince people to buy things. <laughs> you ever feel bad about that? Uh, if it's if it's like a a really how do I put this? Like a foolish old woman who doesn't know what's going on, like she can't see past. Then once in a while, I won't play any games. I'll just sell her what she wants. But most of the time. I'd say 99% of the time, I just, it's like, oh, you should buy this as well. Well, you need the warranty, sir. It's very important. You know, with the warranty, you don't have to go to customer service. You can just come right to us and, you know, no third-party service, just bam, you got your replacement. And they're like, oh, that's pretty good. Not having to deal with customer service, right? Mm -hmm. Man, how, how's your uh, dating life? Just curious. Do you feel, see, um, that's pretty easy? Um, so do so I have well? it pretty easy? I would say I don't pursue a lot of people because mm -hmm. I'm really an over – I've been told by a few people uh, that I'm an overwhelming person and that I'm like – like oh, quote from one of my sister's friends, I love your brother, but he is just so much. And I'm like, eh, you're, you're darn right I'm so much. But in any case – um, I'm a lot as a person. And so there's not a lot of, you know, I, I, there's not a lot of women who immediately are like, oh, I love this guy. I can totally take him on. Mm -hmm. And so it's pretty sparse. Dating life is pretty sparse. Um, what else could I miss say about that? It, it's pretty sparse just because there's not a lot of people I've met who are willing to handle that. Mm -hmm. And so I think I'm not about to turn that down. You know, eventually I'll find someone who can, you know, roll with the punches, so to speak. And once I find that person, let the seduction begin. <laughs> you see, I mean, I I see like a lot of times uh, selling yourself is all dating is. You seem like someone who can really sell themselves. So, oh yeah, because like you can't put up the ma mask. Eventually, it falls off, and then it's like they suddenly realize, oh no, I'm not dating the person that I wanted to date. And it's like, great job. Now you've screwed yourself. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> best scenario is to come as you are presenting both the best and the worst so that they know what they're getting into and they also know what's good about you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, if you uh, had three wishes, what would you wish for and why? Can't get unlimited questions. I mean, unlimited. Uh, unlimited. Of course, of course. I do not like wishes i'm gonna be honest i think that they're dangerous i believe very much in the monkey's paw i think that whatever divine cheating you do something's gonna come back and get you so if it's like man i wish i could i used to wish this when i was 13 i, I wish i could go back in time and change all the embarrassing things that i've done and make it so that um nobody uh whatever feel the consequences of like my my, my stupidity and uh, i wish i i didn't embarrass myself in front of that girl and when i was 17 i was like wait no because those mistakes gave you something they did they really gave you something and so you really shouldn't be so ungrateful but uh in that case i think that wishing not only shows a lack of gratefulness but also a lack of understanding because you don't know What's going to come back and it's like, oh, you wish for this? Well, too bad, buddy. Here's the consequence. It's like, don't wish, dude. Make it happen. Take the action. Don't wish upon a star, dude. It's going to fall on you.
Man, okay. Uh, so no wishes for you. Okay, if you could have any job in the world, um, what would it be and why? Uh, again, sales or psychologist. I have to work with people. I have to struggle in the endeavor of the social with other humans. Very, I, I can't do anything without people. I couldn't do my homework as a kid. I couldn't like, I couldn't drive without someone right there next to me. I still have trouble with it, but I'm getting better. Um, I just need the social energy pressing against me to <sighs> motivate me to action. You're pretty oriented with people. Um, wh wh why do you think school was tough? Oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> school was, <sighs> homeschool was tough. Going to school wasn't tough, but homeschool, it's like, okay, well, sit down and do your work. And I'm like, I don't care about this. This is so dumb. I don't want to write. I don't want to write sentences. And I would break down and cry because I don't want to do it. I don't boo hoo hoo. And I would whine and complain. Now I can write paragraphs off the top of my head. But, you know, back in the day, I absolutely couldn't. I couldn't even write a sentence. When I was like 11 years old, I, I, I would like have these nervous breakdowns. I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. But why else was school hard? I think that's the main reason. It's just I'm not inter I have no internal motivation. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all pressure. I'm being moved by the world. I do not move the world. Not yet. Do mm. so you feel as though, like, because you were homeschooled, that it was a problem? Like, you you think it would have been differently if you went to, like, a actual school? or? Uh, I think it's just how I am. I think one of the first things my mom thought when I came out of the womb, and she said, it's just going to be harder for this kid, isn't it? He's just going to have a harder time with everything. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did have two years of private school when I was like 16 and 17. Really good for me. Really helpful. Changed a lot of things about my life. Very grateful for it. Uh, but I, I needed to go do public school. I'm, I'm not, or not pub. I needed school with strangers, with others. So that I could get that competition, you know, because I need to outshine people. I need to be the coolest. <laughs> uh, if you could change anything about the world, what would you change and why? The world, like the whole world, if I could change it. Yeah, if anything. Ooh, that's a big question. What would I change? Oh, gosh, I don't think about the world at large. So this is a tough question. Um. I would probably change out the world. I, I more arrogance. I think. Do you are you really telling me that I that I have the scope of knowledge to envision? I'd be afraid if someone said, "Press this button, make one good change to the world." I'd be like, "I am not prepared for that. I can't do it, dude. I would screw myself over because right now." I know that I'm capable. I know that I can do things, that I can recover from a lot of stuff. But who knows what would happen if I changed that? I'm not about to, ch to change something about the entire world. Maybe I'd start a revolution in the middle of nowhere for kicks and giggles if someone said, like, hey, you got to do it right now. Change something about the world. I'm like, okay, uh, destabilize a world government. Let's see what happens. But other than that, if I was given the choice, I'm not going to change something that big. It's not my place. Okay. Uh, what do you do on your just like free time? I run a D&D &D session. I'm actually going to run one a few hours later today. Very excited about it. D&D. &D. Yeah, I run D&D. &D. I'm a dungeon master. Dungeon master. Okay. How'd you get into that? I hated being a player because all the dungeon masters that I had received previously were like, they were not fit for the role. And I thought, is this really what d d is like? And then I watched other people do it, and I was like, no, they're having a great time. But it's because of the dungeon master and how he orients himself. And so I thought, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be the best dungeon master and give my friends the best d d time imaginable so that they don't have to be given this terrible experience of being under tyrannical DMs. Or being under careless or clueless DMs. So I read up on my source books. I make sure that 
Uh, I've always got the rules down. I've always got, uh, I've got this balance between rule keeping and, oh, I'll allow it. Because if you do too much, I'll allow it. There's no structure. There's no, freedom isn't meaningful without a limit to struggle against. That's my philosophy as a DM. Um, so you need limits in order for your moments of brilliance to feel meaningful, to have actual meaning. That's what I do. I, I, I play that middle line where it's like, okay, these are the rules, but you suggested something really cool. So you know what? I'll allow it, sort of. My players really like that. <laughs> um, man, uh, hmm. Thomas, you got anything? Yeah, sure. Um, what's a skill or ability that you have that um, you think separates you from other people? I, uh, ooh, good question. <sighs> I can laugh at myself. Someone can say, you, you know, William, you're like this. And I'm like, eh, I'm maybe, probably. Uh, you're, you're, you're right. Or someone's like, you know, you know, I get mocked or someone makes fun of me or someone doesn't take me seriously. I can kind of put up my shoulders and be like, all right, man, that's you. Whatever you say, you know, you don't like me. Uh, you made fun of me. You, you know, you're trying to be an asshole to me. I, whatever, man. Basically, my skill is that I am professionally unbothered. Mm -hmm. Inter interpersonally. Now, it does obviously hurt deep down if someone's like being hurtful towards you. But like most in most interactions, what it's like, whatever, dude. My my attitude is appropriately carefree. Okay. Uh, what's something that um bothers you the most? Ooh, what bothers me the most? Shortness with other people when they're like, oh well, no. And then they just end the conversation. I'm like, what no, I, I'm trying to engage with you. I want to know more. I want you to know more. I'm collaborating with you here. And you're just gonna say, huh, nerd, and shut up. It's like nothing bothers me more than not having engagement with others. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, social time, oh, I need to recharge every now and then because I'm a human being with limited energy. But for the most part, lack of it, lack of engagement from others is what bothers me the most, really bugs me. <laughs> um, hmm. Stay away from ISTPs then. <laughs> Right? I have an ISTP brother. And every time yeah, I talk I, about typology, he just goes, nerd. Nothing else. <laughs> Literally nothing else. That's just what he does. <laughs> and TE nemesis. It makes me want to mm -hmm. about to slap some fools. I love ISTPs, though. I love that SE parent. So competent, honestly. Relatively speaking. What, what <laughs> do you think are um, challenges that what are things that motivate you? What are things that motivate me? Um, insignificance, a feeling of insignificance. If I feel that sense of, oh, you're not really anything, are you? It's like, that's not allowed at all. I, I have to rise to become something, even if it's out of the ordinary, even if people are like, you, what's that? I want to be able to have significance whether through uniqueness or through intense skill or anything the the feeling of you're not really any you're not much of anything that motivates me because like no i am something or at least i can become something okay um, if there was a thing you would go to jail for what do you think it would be hmm Ooh. What would I go to jail for? I tend to stay out of trouble, so that's a bit of a hard question. But one thing I go to jail for. Oh gosh. It occurs to me how responsible I am. Um <laughs> what would I go to jail for? I can't even I, I imagine snapping and just killing someone after like if there's been a ton of pressure, situation is boiling over, you know, hands are about to be thrown, I would probably go to jail for killing someone who I thought was a threat. And it's like, dude, you're ruining everything. 
you're a massive danger to everyone. You're pressuring me. I am not okay with this. And then it's like, you know what? I'm going to snap. I'm going to knock your lights out. So like assault and battery or murder, uh, if the situation ratcheted it up too high, I, I tend to go to extreme reactions really quickly. Bam! I 100% would probably go to jail for some sort of physical assault. Okay. Um, hmm. What is something you would recommend to the next generation? Learn humility. Learn questioning yourself and realizing that most ideas are wrong. Most convictions are not based on anything substantial and that you, ha you have to be okay with your uncertainty, but never willing to, s to be wrong. So once you find that you're wrong, well, I expected that I'm going to correct myself. Uh, realizing that you can be great, but you're not all that. That's what I think humility is. It's an accurate assessment of your own worth. And so I, that's what I would advise the next generation. Learn to accurately assess yourself and who you are. Okay. If you could be born in any time period, what would you want to be born and why? Ooh, born in any time period. Ooh, I like myself some futuristic tech. I like myself some lightsabers. Go ahead and put me in the 25th century, man. Go ahead and put me with the warp drive and the Starfleet protocol and the fancy tech and the the adventuring across the universe, potentially the multiverse. Put me in that new frontier. I mean, it would be scary as all heck, and I, I would hate it, but, like, throw me in, man. Um, um, what is a celebrity you identify closely with? A celebrity I identify closely with? Ooh. I don't know a lot about celebrities. I don't keep up with them. As I again, maybe I sort another, of just hmm? could, could be another famous person, maybe not a celebrity. Yeah. OK. Um, <laughs> probably Donald Trump. Not because. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because he's he's up there on the stage. He's bullying people. He's being an absolute punk. He's he, he knows how to play that game of. You're wrong. You're the and he's like talking about how You're wrong. he's always yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's because you hid the emails. You're the one doing this, and you know he go. That's not exactly how he talks, but uh, roughly speaking, he's very abrasive. It's a performance. You know that he's not always like that, but he's putting on this bullying show, and it's like you'd better stand up to that guy if you're gonna earn his respect. And so I, f I feel that way, too. When I, when I see him tearing up a stage politically, I'm like, <laughs> I would love to do that. Oh, I, he's literally me for real. <laughs> OK. Um, hmm. How was your childhood? Um, lonely, really lonely. But that's because I didn't know what was appropriate, what was not appropriate, despite my beloved ENFP mother doing her best to teach me but you know that fe critic man it gets it gets you um that was probably the worst part of my childhood was f fe critic and loneliness uh how was my childhood i would say it i'm very glad that i had younger siblings teaching me responsibility like hey you're older you're an example to them you have to act like it no mom i don't wanna but i did anyways became the responsible older brother um it was a lot of moving around. I think in my life, I've changed houses seven times and I'm 20 years old. So lots of adventure, lots of new people that I've had to meet and make friends with and then get torn away. And then a new community and the same thing happens like four or five times. And you kind of learn not to assign lots of significance to things because oh, here today, gone tomorrow. You know, it's not really worth much. And so, you know, that stunted my ability to be social, but it also kind of taught me to live in the moment because, hey, enjoy what you have now because you might have it for 10 years, but it might be gone tomorrow. So really take what you have in this second. Be happy about it. If you can't be happy about it, find a way to use it. It's, it's just what you got to do, man. It, it was a, a useful childhood, but it was not a happy childhood. Uh, Thomas, what are you thinking? Um, 
I don't know, maybe one more question. Um, so since we're talking about your childhood, uh, what's what's like the most important lessons you think you've learned? Ooh. Oh, ho, ho. the most important lessons I think I've learned. Um, nobody cares what you think. That was a very important lesson. Uh, my dad, INTJ, GE parent. He's like, look, nobody's, it wasn't personal from him. He's like, look, nobody's going to listen to you. You're a kid. You haven't learned anything. You haven't gone to school. You don't have accolades. I barely have accolades. Um, you got to realize that questioning is the way to go. Questioning is what you want to do. And he taught me that if you really want to learn, ask people what they think. What do you mean by that? Well, what is that exactly? Blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> I think that's one of the most valuable lessons is you don't know anything so or nobody cares what you think. So you know, humble yourself. And I was like, okay, I'll, I can do that. Um, I think the second best lesson is you have to love your siblings because I couldn't do that until I was like 14. I, they, were, they, were my, mm, they were mine. They were mine to squash and mine to control and boss around until my ISTP brother got sick of me, gave me what for. And I was like, oh my gosh, am I the bad guy here? And I was devastated. And then I basically didn't view my, <laughs> my sister as human because she had that, uh, that deadly sin that deadly sin of wrath. And I was like, eh, well, you deserve it. You, you deserve everything that I, all the pain I hand out to you because you're bothering me. And it's like, dad was like, no, you can't do that. You know, you got to make stuff for her. You got to, you got to make peace with her because he didn't have, he didn't make peace with his siblings and it cost him. And so he's like, look, you got to be, you got to be loving because they'll remember you, everything you do. You're the older brother. They'll remember your abuses of power. They'll remember your generosity. So what are you, what are you going to do? What memories are you going to store up inside of them? And it's like, oh my gosh, you're right, dad. You're absolutely right. And so, yeah, to summarize the two things I learned, love your siblings. You need them. They're going to remember it. And then the other one was nobody cares what you think. So ask questions. Mm -hmm. All righty. Tom, you ready? Yeah, I think so. Right, What's man. the verdict? <clears throat> so basically what we got here is you're initiating. Even when you got on the, the call, you're very initiating. Okay. Um, obviously progression. Um, you're informative also. So informative initiating uh, progression. Um, that means you're a starter, get things going. Um, you're talking about things being logically impossible, if this and that statement, uh, questioning ideas, most things ideas are wrong. Um, you even gave your uh, definition of, um, I forget which, what word it was, but uh, you said it was an accurate assessment of your own worth. I forget. Humility, exactly what yeah. Want, or whatever you called it. Um, but that was your definition. So it's T-I. Um, you, like let's say you struggle, well, you talked about consequences a lot. Um, gratitude, that's F-E. Um, so you got uh, S-I-N-E-T-I-F-E. You're down to ESFJ and ENTP, and obviously you're uh, abstract, very abstract. Um, your ENTP, I got Enneagram 4. Dude, you're talking about like um, envy a lot, uh, insecurities, uh, things like that. So I would hit you for Enneagram 4, actually. Um, which That's how I've been testing recently, actually. Four, been... it's like 458 was the tri type. 4 W. Uh, five is what I would get you, get you with. And you seem to be hmm, SPXX. Um, so that means you're self-preserving to sexual, and that sexual comes out when you get like all angry and you want to like make other people suffer as well. Oh yeah, so, <laughs> absolutely, man. So it's kind of like the Joker, you're like a very like you remind me of the Joker, pretty much, man. I've been told <laughs> that. I got, I mean, I got told by some INFJ woman that I'm tutoring online right now. Uh, she's in a horrible state, but she's like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you aspire to be the Joker. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And she's like, I'm pretty sure you're a serial killer, dude. I'm pretty sure you've murdered someone. And I'm like, you don't have any proof. And she's like, that does not help your case. Yeah. And a lot of could, would, like use a lot of could, maybe those are all any words, possibilities. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, man, got you the ENTP four W five SPXX. 
Awesome. Any questions for us, man? How? <sighs> Never actually ENTP that, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was, I was figuring. Yeah, I, I've, I've definitely got that starter type interaction style, but that mm -hmm. little voice of doubt is like, you don't know anything. You don't know anything. It's like. Mm -hmm. Go get it figured out publicly. So I came here and I'm like, okay, I'm an ENTP. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But envy. People keep on telling me, oh, you can't be a self-preservation or a sexual four as an ENTP. That's not I'm like, bro. I know. People are so fucking stupid. So oh fucking my gosh. stupid. There's not, I've, maybe there's some rationale behind that, but I've never heard a person tell me why that is. They're just like, no, that's only ISFPs and INFPs. Yeah. I'm like, Kill yourself. Like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I, I, the funny thing is I watched a panel of, like, um, Enneagram 4, and, like, most of mm -hmm. them up there were fucking ENTPs, all wearing all black and shit. I'm like, look at these fucking... And it's like, people don't even <laughs> realize... Nerds. Well, it's not, it's not nerds, but it's like they wear all black, and they're, like, they're talking about, like, you know, one of them was talking about being a sexual for it. I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. Like, I ain't dealing with nobody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's crazy. <laughs> You see INTJs that are uh, forwards, and you you see uh, ENTPs that are forward. You can see INFJs as well, uh, maybe possibly ISFJ, but I haven't really seen that many. But I've been seeing, I see a lot of ENTP fours, a lot, and people are like, oh, ENTPs can't be forwards, can't be forwards. I'm like, there's you know no reason to think that. Like you don't, know, I'm like, you guys haven't read it enough for the shit. You guys don't know shit. Absolutely clear not. Clear for, clear for. Literally read the complete Enneagram. It is, it's, it's right there. Yeah, you're right. It's right there. It says it. The sin. I have it literally right there, like on my dresser, which my dad moved, but I'll, you know, I'll have to find it again. But it's, yeah. it's literally, literally right there. Read, yeah, that. Read the book. Fucking book. Sake, people. It says envy in the bitch. Like, is their sin? It's like envy. <sighs> but, so hey. ridiculous, dude. But yeah, SPSX. That figures I, I I don't have a social bone in my body. Uh <laughs> well the social the social fours are always complaining about their problems a lot. If you see Oh my ENTP, gosh, that doesn't help you, like, dude. Oh my god, I had this problem. Oh, I had this problem. Oh I maybe problem. don't be a bitch. Like uh Kanye West is always crying. Oh, oh got this problem. Oh, they did this to me. Like social fucking four. Get out of here. <laughs> SI si inferior. Wow, it's the crying soy jack. You have oh, like the the social four is like the crying soy jack, and then you have the Chad tenacity. Just mm -hmm. deal with it. Yeah, you got the 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 fucking go getter like David Goggins. He's like, fucking oh yeah, him. dude, he's a beast, man. He's a beast of a four. <laughs> he he takes that SP to the he takes the SP to the next level. I'd hate to see that guy angry. I'd hate to see him go sexual. Right. Oh my gosh. To see that guy. He's a killer. Before. I tell you, when I when I get you ever you ever seen that low tier god meme where he's like, your life is worth nothing. You serve zero purpose. Mm -hmm. You should kill yourself now. That's basically me when angry. So yeah, sexual for anger. It's like, how do I make this person feel as devalued and uncomfortable as possible? And you know, maybe they'll just never talk to me again. Wouldn't that be nice? But you know, trying to tone it down, be more acceptable. Be a better boy. Yeah, yeah, you should. <laughs> I, I, I would say, like, the biggest advice I would give any ENTP is always work on your anger, man. That shit will fuck you up. Because yeah. you, you get one of those, you you get one, like, especially with Kyle, his shit is so fucking bad. Holy shit, that motherfucker, like, crosses into sexual so quick. And, like, I'm like, dude, they're going to put your ass in jail. Like, they're going to put you in jail because it just, you know, like, and if there's any alcohol involved, he even goes even quicker to that shit. Nah, you can't involve the alcohol, man. Don't do that. <laughs> is it quicker, like, you know? Um, but if there's one thing I would say, it's just fucking definitely deal with that, that demon or whatever the hell y'all going through with that shit. Because you do one thing, you fuck somebody up, you're going to jail. You're going to fucking jail. You know? Like, I tell you what, Robert Green says, biggest cloud that biggest cloud to emote to, to reason that's emotion. That's like in 48 laws of power. He's like, your greatest enemy is your, your big emotional gung ho. Let's go guys. Blah. It's like, you're going to dig yourself into an early grave, man. Don't do that. Distance yourself, rise above, look down on the situation and say, okay, this is a game. It's a game. This guy's playing against me. It's not personal. I can't be angry with him. 
He's just trying to gain for himself and I'm trying to gain for myself. Mm -hmm. Everybody's just trying to win in their own way. So I hope he doesn't mind if I win a little better than he does. Um, that's that's how you got to look at it. Because if you make it personal, you're gonna you're just gonna die. Well, you're, yeah. you're gone. I mean, I mean, you could you could be anywhere in the world, but the second you fucking do something crazy, like let's say Kanye West with the Jewish shit, um, they take all your money. <laughs> they take all your Gosh, fucking money. Dude. They take all your fucking money, dude. Like what he thought he thought he was safe. He had all this money, huh? Two billion. And boom, two, just like that. Nah, if you're, if you, if you look at yourself and you're like, "Am I a part of the special club?" and there's any hesitation, shut up. Do, do not expose yourself like that. Like, you know, they do this, they do that. It's like, yeah, and they're the ones who hold power. So how about you do the smart thing and just you don't you don't say your plan. Do not announce your plan to the enemy. Such a dumb idea. <laughs> And you might have to wait a couple generations to to uh, to get yourself to that class, you know. Um, but all right. you set it up, set uh, the next your kids up, and the next kids to do that. But if you do try to fight them, they'll take everything away from you, and make mm -hmm. it like hell for your kids as well. So mm -hmm. good good luck with that shit. He's he's, he's lucky that his wife is Kim Kardashian. <laughs> oh, I do have uh, one question. Yeah. At one, at what point were you like? Yeah, this guy, this guy's an ENTP. Uh, Immediately. Probably like <laughs> a minute in. <laughs> a minute in, it's like, oh, I know this dude. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, minute in. I mean, off the rip, you like initiate it before we even start this session. Yeah. And then you said, I said, hey man, you want to tell us? No, you're like, no, let's just jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. That's a progression statement. So off that initiating progression already, uh, you start talking. You got abstract and TI. Boom, gone. ENTP. Like, yeah, I, I know who this guy. I will say the entire time I'm speaking, I'm like, oh, that's probably progression, isn't it? Oh, is that T or T I? Oh, is that so the entire time I'm like trying to type along and I'm like, he's not gonna guess ESFB, isn't he? Because some of the questions made me think oh, <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, that one time you were talking about giving everybody experience. I kind of noted that and I was kind of laughed about it. You're like, oh, I like to give everybody experience with your dungeon. Lord. Yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. It, I yeah, actually yeah. do enjoy getting that collective thing going, but it it's hard to do. But if I see that everyone's enjoying it, that makes it easier for me to give a good experience. Because mm -hmm. otherwise, I just like I freeze up and I'm like, oh, they're not having a good time, so I shouldn't even try. Mm -hmm. It's like ugh. doing that, man. That, that's one of the best things. Huh? I've noticed that you know, even though fucking like some of the ENTPs are supposedly SE demon. They can really give some of the best experiences, some of the best experiences um, from from those people. Um, but I know yeah, they man. consistently keep doing it, but um, when they do do it, they do a very good job. So I would highly oh, recommend. Oh, yeah. Keep Especially that. if you can abandon self-consciousness and you can say, hey, I'm not going to pay too much attention to myself. I'm going to be externally focused mm -hmm. and I'm going to try to figure other people out and try to give them what they are looking for instead of being like, oh, am I doing it right? Am, am I doing it right? Because once you do that, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You just defeat yourself. Don't do that. You got to be like, hey, I might fail. I might succeed. It don't matter. I have to try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Well said, man. Well, we got another type of session, so we got to get out of here, man. But it was a Awesome. Pleasure. Thank you very much. I appreciate no problem, it. Man. Hey, hope to see you around, man. You too. Bye. Yeah. Easy.